Hello and welcome to another episode of the Socialers podcast with Jason and Joanna. Joanna. Uh, I know. What? what? I, I don't know. I was trying something different. <laughs> it was, it's been weird because then Every I'll stop. Every single episode I get it wrong. for like three seconds. To like, and me too. And we're so out of sync. I don't know. We'll figure it out eventually. That's okay. We're testing. We're in the test phase, but we will not be A-B testing. That's too much work. I'm not putting out multiple episodes way too much work i was listening to a podcast earlier this week and they said someone left us a review saying we're lazy um yeah damn right we're lazy no we're not editing this no we're not doing that research somebody left a review for (laughs) no 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 so i was listening to a podcast where someone accused them of being lazy and they were like yeah you can make a podcast and be lazy (laughs) both can be true everybody happy we talked about that last up oh it hasn't it hasn't actually published yet, but I guess if once people hear this, it will have published. Will. Never mind. See, we got. I got to be thinking like forward. It's really hard living in the future. I know. I know. Can't make everybody happy. But was here what we I are. was going to say. So that's that. I put myself out there recently. I did an AMA today. I put. I posted an AMA. So I'm like crazy about Reddit. Like I've had an account for 13 years, and I've like never used it. Like I started just consuming, consuming the past year, and then I was like, screw it. Signed up for a premium account, started organizing all of these custom feeds, and now I'm like addicted. And then... What does a premium account get you? So you lose the ads, which is amazing. No more ads. Um, No more penis soap ads. Sad. Can't live without those. I mean, you can. (laughs) And then you get... There's other things. The only things that stand out is you, you lose the ads... And then you, um, you get like this currency that you can give to people that you like, I guess, that post things that you enjoy. Um, so I'm, I'm still figuring it out. I, I don't know. I think the biggest thing for me is, um, well, for one, I just, it's a business expense because I use it for research. Um, but I thought I like the idea of losing the ads, which I th- I know sounds counterproductive considering I run an agency that we run ads for our clients. So, but I just... I never found, I don't know that, I mean, some of the, you know, now that I think about it, the ads on Reddit were never really that great. They never felt super targeted to me. They, they definitely do on Facebook and Instagram, but the ads on Reddit never felt super targeted. Maybe you opted out. I don't know. I've opted. I'm I'm the opposite. I'm the opposite. I just don't think they do as good of a job. I've actually noticed that too. I mean, not just the penis ad, but. (laughs) Most of my ads aren't like my Instagram ads where it's like, okay, I'm more than like, which I don't like mind. I that. mean, don't get me wrong. I'll buy yeah, that. Instagram's it's too much. I, I definitely think that they're just it's too much of it. But I, what I will say is super targeted. Like I bought quite a few things from ads on Instagram, so I don't mind it. And that's why I opt in, but Reddit never seemed to get there. So that's interesting. I'm realizing this as I'm saying it out loud. That's why I opted out. Cause I always felt like, you know, it almost felt like when I'm watching, you know, Hulu or something and just, just like, Oh, here we go. I got to watch two minutes of ads that have nothing to do with me. That's how it felt. So, so I guess that's Mm -hmm. what premium is, but anywho, I started an, I started an AMA and I'm Kimberly and our team told me to do it. I wish I would have thought of it myself, but you know me, I don't like being the center of attention. So I was like, yeah, but then I looked at that AMA like thread on Reddit and I'm like, Oh, anybody could do this. So I put it out there today and gotten a decent amount of people asking questions. It's kind of fun. Nice. I mean, it's just, it's cool. Cause like people are asking like real questions and I'm like, Oh, do, do, do. And I'm like, I, I do have things to offer. Um, so it's fun. I mean, it's not like, don't get me wrong. It's not celebrity where there's a ton of stuff, but it's kind of just, it's cool just to, that's been my struggle, you know, is just, I know that I have a lot to give. I'm just trying to find the people to give it to. And that was kind of a cool way of doing that. Find the right corner yeah, of the internet. Exactly. To capitalize on. So that, yeah. that was my exciting story for well, the day. My exciting story is that I made Zapier my bitch today. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that cool? I let me let me tell you this. And this is at risk of you firing me for something called time theft. Okay. Because you pay my All salary. Right. I have spent an exorbitant amount of hours on Zapier trying to automate things in my mm-hmm. role that are yeah. silly. Move this invite right. to yep, this yep. calendar if it comes in under this thing. I have never until today been able to make it work. 
And I think this is a direct reflection of my intelligence, but I'm going to keep telling this story. I don't think I want to do crazy things on Zapier. I feel like every time I have a thought, oh, that would be great if that automatically did Mm -hmm. that. I think it sounds common. I think it sounds like it should be possible. And then I go into Zapier and either it's not an option or it seems like it might work if I do a couple of tweaks yeah. or something. It never works. Hours, Jason, hours. I have stolen from Socialistics LLC to no so avail. Nothing. You're saying I, I, could have, I could have retired by now <laughs> if you weren't monkeying around in Zapier. Probably. Well, here's Probably. a little tip. Here's, here's a little tip or trick. Maybe not so much for you in this situation, maybe. So I've gone through similar, like I love to figure things out on my own, but I often realize, look, I could take the next two hours trying to figure this out, or I can go on Fiverr and hire somebody to do it for 25 bucks who will probably figure it out in 10 minutes. Um, it just depends on how important the thing that you want to do is. Um, but I've always been a big believer of that. Um, time is money. So, you know, I, I agree. There's plenty of people that know how to do it and will do it. another perfect example. I've been made fun of this. I'm terrible at wrapping gifts. Terrible. They look horrible. Like I've, I've recorded a video <laughs> about this. Like it's just, it's not good. Uh, you recorded a video about your inability yeah, I did, to Because I was so gifts. frustrated because I was wrapping a gift for Molly as a couple years ago. And I was like, so because it looked like a Franken gift. Like it was like 17. D- did you do a time no, lapse? No, it was like seven different <laughs> types of, because I didn't do enough of the right, this paper. And then I had put other paper and then I taped it. And it, and it just, not, by the time I wrapped it, I forgot what was in it. I'm like, I don't even know what's going on right now. So I've been trying to find somebody to wrap all my gifts so that they look nice. And there's no real. This is how, this is how low key I am. Amazon gives you a box. It gives you the gift in a box. It's already wrapped. They already have to open the box. So you're you're wrapping papers, the Amazon (laughs) bag (laughs) that it comes in. (laughs) Yeah. If there's a gift option, I'll, I'll hit, I'll take that button. Sure. You guys can get away with that. Molly and I, like she is crazy. Who's you guys? Even, well, what does I'm, that I'm mean? Not assuming that your significant <laughs> other wants his name broadcasted on our podcast. You losers. <laughs> so you and your significant you other. Can get away. But Molly is crazy about Christmas. Like the house is, it looks like Christmas threw up on her house on the outside and in the inside. So the presents have to look good. Um, and actually, I kind of, I like, I mean, I like the way it looks, but I, it, that's my favorite part of it is that day. Like it's her and my boys opening gifts. It's like the best part. So I wanted them to look nice and I'm terrible at it. And somebody who's good at it, it's going to look better and they're going to do it in half the time. I haven't found anybody to do it yet. End rant back to Zapier. Um, it is awesome though. Zapier. 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 I, I, it has to be Zapier, right? Know. Because they're called Zaps. Zap, Zapier. Unless they're called yeah, Zapier. I guess you're right. I think it's Zapier. It's like Sweeto. Sweeto. Remember when we used Sweeto? Sweeto for Jif, recording. Gif. I think I. It's Swido. I, I don't know. With an English I'm not, accent, I'm not a smart Sarah's man. Spokesperson's English. I just pronounce plenty of things. You're right, though. If it's a zap, it should be Zapier. But Zapier? Isn't there like Zapier. a weapon? Apier. Either way, I made it my bitch. So it is pretty badass, I'll though. It anyway, I, please. I love playing around with it a little bit. I figured out a few th- like for for socialers for those of you listening. I'll be completely transparent. If you sign up for a membership or if you sign up for a job alert or if you sign up for it, like all of these things, if you sign up for it, it automatically, I have it set up where a Z, I have a zap where it puts those people into our, our newsletter, which I would assume most people I mean, will if, want, yeah. but that's cool. I'm doing the yeah. same thing. And then, and then, so I have these automations set up and you're absolutely right. It's like one less thing that you have to do. So it is awesome technology. I love it. The only thing I don't like about automation is that sometimes those tasks, I actually really enjoy the brain break. Mm -hmm. Like I really enjoy. So I will go in and put job postings on the socialers job board. You can't zap that. Um, You can't zap that, but I enjoy it. It's like, I don't know. It's so mindless. You just, it's kind of like data entry. You just do it. You can have a podcast on. Everything else feels like I really have to use my no, brain. I'm too old for that stuff. <laughs> Using your brain. Well, your brain retired like yeah, what, five years much. ago? Your I body's like, just got 10 years left. I, I'm not going to lie. I like being in a headspace where it's like, what am I going to work on today? And it just allows me to be super creative, like just being able to have time to think through some things. And um, 
So I, I mean, that that's where I'm at in my life is just, I need time to think about what I'm going to do with the remaining few years <laughs> I have left on this marble. <laughs> I am getting, to, I'm not going to lie. Oh, so I'm, I'm dating. My, so 40, my birthday's next month. It's my last year in my forties. This is not good. I'm not. So you're turning yes. 49 or it's this I'm is turning 49. Oh, you're turning 49. Year. Oh, that's not so bad. It feels, that's like a, that's like a forget it birthday. Oh, like they, I've, no I one will even know. And then once 50, you hit 40, like you don't give a shit about your birthdays anymore. Um, but 50 is a little scary. Like it doesn't seem real. Like, I can't believe I'm getting that close to that. I don't mentally, I don't feel that old physically. Definitely too much baseball and volleyball over the years. So I feel it, but I don't not mentally. So you can be whatever age you want in, in this world. I wish I wish th in, in our the world, technology needs to catch up where we can download our consciousness into a new, fresh, younger body. Like is that, I need that to happen before I'm done. It, that will happen. Yeah, I believe it. I don't think that's you know? going to happen. Not in America. Not in America. People think that. Wait, 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 people okay, think Australia. That, <laughs> Where? Well, people think that there were chips, microchips, in the COVID vaccine. Do you really think people are going to let other people download their consciousness? Well, Con if it, if it's just a. It. Um, there's a there's a show on Netflix called Altered Carbon, and they were called Sleeves. So you would like it, well, it's just like a clone. They make a clone and then they download your consciousness into a sleeve. And then it's like you. And you can talk to yourself like you can talk to an external version of no. yourself. I would love that. I would love to brainstorm no, with you're me. getting it all wrong. They take they basically whole brain. pull your consciousness out of your old, decrepit, dying body and put it into a new, fresh, younger one. So it's still you just with a new physical body. Does that make sense? What happens to the burn, old body? I don't know. They burn it. You're done with it. Oh, my God. Well, you you don't need so the old dark. one anymore. You've got the new one. I know. But you don't need it. You, you don't even have to look the same. You could like place an order and, and I want to be taller or I want to look different. Or you, they can just copy you and you can look the same if you want to. Seriously. Like how amazing okay. would that be? Because you then would maintain your knowledge and experience mentally, but you'd have this fresh new young body to then... Can you stop saying fresh that is body? Weird. I wish I <laughs> hadn't said really that. really creeping me out. <laughs> that is weird. Should we have them? Although this is, this starts, this is starting to feel like a true crime podcast, which is, I hope you know, that is my end game to slowly turn <laughs> yeah. this into like, a true crime like, Talk about podcast. social media for like two minutes and then just that. <laughs> well, we'll let the audience, the audience will yeah. dictate what we do. Um, exactly. We'll do whatever you yeah. want. You know what I don't, whatever the, you the want. stats don't tell you how much people listen. Like, are they listening for the first five minutes and like, oh, this is horrible or right. Cause I think a download or a listen is just, a, they just have to listen for a small amount. So we don't really know if everybody's sticking around to the end, but maybe we should do like a promote, well, like a contest and like, like have a like secret, a secret sound. word near the end or somewhere in there. Do you have your, do you have your soundboard I ready don't. to go? I haven't done that yet. Oh, okay. Well, I have trivia, so you have time. All right. Okay, let's get okay. started. We're here for a purpose. We are here to talk about influencers and the power of influencers. <laughs> Never heard of her. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. We have, we have a decent amount of experience with influencers. I would say that we're kind of gearing yeah. away and yeah. trying to continue down the path of just being a social media agency which they are related but there are influencer specific agencies and i understand why it is so much work it is I'm there's a lot of expertise that goes into it it is not just cold calling well, which is or, why Ooh, i have a good brand that these yeah. people will want to work with me it was no, interesting they for won't. us because we felt i think we always felt like we're a social media agency of course we have to do that if we didn't do that then we're it's not doesn't it won't feel right and then when we got into the thick of it we realized wait a minute there's there's a lot more to this and i, I think our discomfort with anything that we don't uh, isn't homegrown i think we started to get too uncomfortable with and then we just said okay well we're just going to focus on organic and paid we'll refer people out for influencer to influencer agencies which i think was the right call it doesn't change the fact that it was in many ways effective very effective when done right so um so yeah i think uh 
Yeah. Yeah. No, it definitely is effective. And I'll I'll show you oh, how. I'll start with okay. the numbers because I find numbers boring sometimes, but this is this is actually really crazy. So the influencer marketing market grew from 1.7 billion in 2016 to 9.7 billion in 2020. Oh. And then in 2021, it went to 13.8 billion. So you can only imagine yeah. where it'll be in five mm-hmm. years. I mean, it's part, I mean, 61. Yeah, Sorry, did I interrupt you? I was in the middle Do of it. my Go numbers. Do it, keep going. Shut up, Kim. <laughs> 61% of consumers trust influencer recommendations compared to 38% who trust brand produced mm. content. That is crazy yeah. to me. Okay, the last I'm waiting. one is your trivia question. I couldn't find, we're, 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 if you search influencer marketing. We're already doing trivia? trivia? It's really hard. We're already we're, doing trivia. I hope you're ready. I hope the blood is flowing to your brain. All right. Okay. okay. I, I put it in in our notes, in our shared notes, because I didn't know where else to put it. I didn't want to have to click around, but I put it in code. Do you see it? No, I haven't looked at it. And I have a feeling that- (laughs) The answer is a number. I have a feeling that if people actually do start to listen to this, this is going to be one of their favorite parts. Oh, here's the part where Joanna asks the social media agency owner a social media question that he can't answer. Let's see if he gets it right. Yeah, it's hilarious. hilarious. The irony. It's what keeps people coming (laughs) back. Sure. Okay. Businesses blank may businesses make a blank percent return for every dollar spent on influencer marketing. This blew my mind. That's why I made it into it's trivia. A percentage number. It's a percentage, or you can give a ratio to, or you can give a dollar amount. So for every dollar you put in, how many dollars are people are brands getting back using influencer marketing? Obviously, it's not expected that I would get this exactly right, but I beat. If I'm near it, that that would be impressive. And my definition of near is plus or minus like one unit. We'll we'll decide based on your answer. Um, Well, you said you were blown away, so it's obviously a pretty big number. I'm never going to get this. This is ridiculous. 25 to one. Oh, my God. Damn. No. Too much? It's 6.5. 6.5. 6.5. You pro- $6.5 dollars for every dollar spent on okay. influencer marketing. That's not bad. Combine that with 61% of consumers saying they trust influencer recommendations over yeah. brand. Now, for those of you Crazy. listening, influencer can have a negative connotation. So we're not talking about the Kim Kardashians of the world and the mega celebrities I mean, obviously, they have huge followings and have an impact. Really, where the magic happens in the world that we live in is where with the influencers that most people have never, from the outside looking in, haven't heard of, like people that are in a particular industry or specific niche that people are following, that are passionate about, and have had some sort of trust built with. So I could see why that would be the case. Like there are there are individuals that even I follow who I've enjoyed over the years that if if they were to put something out, I could see how I would be much more down for trusting that recommendation versus just an ad that gets thrown in front of me. So there's, I could see why you know, the returns are, are pretty high for that sort of thing. For sure. So I'll just blow through some of the benefits to influencer marketing. It's it just kind of like off of what you said, it's accessible to businesses of all sizes because there's influencers with followings of all sizes. So influencer, just because you can't afford Kim Kardashian or some other celebrity does not mean that you cannot leverage influencer marketing and get that $6.5 uh, dollar yeah. return. Um, they can aid in your content strategy. This is one of the biggest benefits that I think um, smaller businesses can um, take advantage of. If you send an influencer your product, their job is to make things look good on social media. Mm -hmm. So they've got nice camera, nice equipment, or they know how to use their phone really well. They will give you content and lifestyle content too. Like let's say you're a a baby food brand. You send some baby food to a mom with kids and you're going to get images with kids. And I mean, like think about doing a photo shoot you know, and hiring those models and having people come in, how much that would cost. Instead, you send some free product. Most of the time, influencers want to be paid, want to be compensated as well. I think gone are the days of just sending influencers free product. In our experience, most most people want to be paid as well. That's a pro. 
Influencers can help you avoid ad blockers. So just like you said, I, I think it's a little bit less relevant on Reddit, but you pay premium so you don't get ads. But what's not what what can leak through there is influencers promoting a product, right? It's not technically an ad. They're not paying for ad space. They are just um, reaching their organic audience with essentially an ad. Mm hmm. They can help you reach niche audiences. I have a, I feel like I'm out of breath. I feel like I, you know, walked up the stairs or it's something. It's been a rough day. You've had a rough day. It, it <laughs> has. It's been so rough. I did the Zapier oh, thing and then God, took a four hour nap. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so we had a client who was in the tax for small, doing taxes for small businesses space. They, they actually had a specific service, which was like this little known tax break for small businesses that they would help small businesses get and then they would take their cut. Um, we did influencer marketing for them and the return on investment, oh, I can't even remember. It was, it, was in, it was in the teens. It was like $13 for every dollar spent on influencer mm -hmm. marketing they were getting back. It was such a niche offering, but they got we got local business owners um, to go through this service and then post about their experience. And then just from that and from the, the small business owners or they were more like entrepreneur motivators, things like that, where small business owners would be following them. Um, and yeah, it just went gangbusters. That was awesome. It was? That sounded like a question. It, <laughs> it was? was? No. Not what do you think? <laughs> it was. <laughs> Um, and then finally, they can help you build brand awareness and trust. This goes back to the, the number before 61% of consumers trusting influencer recommendations over just brand produced content. Um, it, it's people look for social proof, I think more so than ever. It, it's no longer about if you have a good looking website, um, an up to date website, it's really people are looking on your socials. Um, for that proof. So have you, you know, been posting regularly? Are your is your content relevant to what they're looking for? And then obviously, of course, if influencers are also in your space posting about your brand, it's yeah. going to help. And, you know, if you're, I think, then we've learned this, um, it's just like anything else. If, I mean, I, we as an agency recommend if, if you're going to do influencer, make sure that whoever's doing it for you do, does it in-house or does a significant amount of it in-house and does, doesn't outsource it. Because um, then you're paying more than you have to. And then you're also... You're just working through a middleman. Um, I think the, the exception there is, you know, if, if you're working with a social media agency and they're doing a bunch of things for you and that's just part of it, then, then that obviously might make sense. But if you're looking to invest pretty heavily into influencer and, and that's the lane that you're kind of predominantly focused on, work, like look for an, an agency that just does influencer. You're, you're going to be served much more effectively. Um, cause that's what they do and that's all that they do. Um, and I, you know, we're a big believer of, of that across the board when it comes to any kind of spend. I mean, there's a handful of agencies that do everything, um, that are the exception to the rule. Um, uh, but they're just, they're massive. And even like if they have hundreds of people, then obviously they have teams that just do a certain thing. But for most of us, especially those that probably listen to something like this or businesses, your budgets warrant, you know, working with agencies that really zero in on that specific thing. And if you do that, um, you're going to be able to move the needle pretty significantly, especially with, with influencers. So. Yeah. And I think when sourcing a influencer agency, something to think about as well is the technology that yeah. they use. We've used our fair share of influencer technology and they can range a lot in terms of benefits. So the smaller ones or the ones you're not paying a ton for really aren't zeroing in on your the influencer's audience and that's the that's the main thing right and that kind of gets into like if you're looking for macro influencers when really you should be looking for micro influencers sorry i think i can hear my dog sniffing at the door did you just no, that hear was me. a huge intake was that, of breath wasn't that me oh no. sniffing at my door <laughs> no don't don't make it weird that's weird we're not in the same place <laughs> listeners let's not get crazier no that's probably our truth, um, I'm sure. yeah I, I i'm pretty sure it is but Anyways, um, I lost my train I have, of thought. I have a new train of thought. I'm going to jump. Oh, I have a train of thought. Okay. You ready? Go for it. Um, no, I lost it. Oh, no, I didn't. So, oh, I was going to say, uh, to piggyback an influencer, make sure, too, that you're working with influencers that value the relationship and are genuinely interested and passionate about what you do and are not looking at it transactionally. 
sometimes it's unavoidable. If you're going to work with like 30, 40, 50 influencers, a percentage of those that just care about what they're getting. Can't avoid that. But where the real magic happens is when you can kind of build an army of influencers that actually really love your stuff. And they're doing it not only for the compensation, but because they actually love the product. Because those people are going to do better stuff and maybe even more than what's asked of them. Um, and it's going to feel more authentic, too. And their followers. Yeah, exactly. Their followers are going to feel more inclined to to trust them because they're not slinging right. products left, right and center. You know, you want there was a, a technology we used where you kind of put up a brief about the brand um, and what you were looking for in terms of the campaign. And then influencers contacted you. So you kind of flipped the script and said, like, do you want to work with us? Because then they had to submit some information about themselves and why they were interested in the brand. And it wasn't just about, um, oh, yeah, I'll take a hundred bucks for posting that because you do. You want that authenticity and people who actually believe in your brand. They don't necessarily have had to use the product before, but is the product relevant to them and their brand and what they normally post? Or is it kind of out of left field? Then, you know, if they're just in it for the mm -hmm. money. There you go. I just thought of an idea. Awesome. Oh. Um, I, no, you oh, go. go ahead. I talk too much. I was just thinking about uh, micro versus macro influencers and how like we've had a couple of um, clients come to us and say, well, um, I want to get I only want influencers with at least over 100,000 followers because they think more eyes mean more mm -hmm. money. But it's so similar to ads, right? It's the right eyes. So if you can get you could spend, I don't know, a thousand dollars getting a hundred thousand um, follower influencer, or you could spend that same thousand dollars across 10 micro yeah. influencers with maybe 15,000 followers, but also check their engagement rate. How, how engaged is their audience? And then who is their audience? Oftentimes with the macro influencers, you have a lot of, you need to check if they're overseas, if they're not where your brand is. Um, if you're a U.S. based brand and the majority of their followers are in, you know, Europe or Australasia or anything like that, you just, you, you don't want to waste your time or money there and then make sure they're engaged and make sure they're you know, the right demographic or they're the right age or they're the right gender. Um, a lot of things go into that. So we've had to kind of re-educate clients on like, no, it's not about how much can you afford in terms of the biggest following, but what makes the most sense and what will spread your budget the furthest. I was thinking about being, I, I tried this for like a hot minute and then I didn't do anything with it. But I always thought it would have been funny to refer to myself as the unfluencer. And then I was going to like post because like I'm this middle aged, bald dude that runs a social media. Nobody cares about what I at. Like who, who would listen to me? So that was going to I was going to like run with that. Like I was going to be the unfluencer and I was going to like post funny videos about just random asinine things that I deal with in my life that are not anything that probably like and try to make it funny and then just go down that road thinking, oh, if I do that, then in inherently maybe I will become an influencer by proclaiming that I'm not. So that was my genius idea that never came to fruition. Um, and then I got busy with some, I, like I, came, that. I got busy with other things. That's really my life goal. I'd listen to That's you. ultimately that. What I all I want to do is make funny. To be silly, an influencer. To be silly. Make that's that's what I did when I was at Microsoft. They paid me obnoxious amounts of money to make silly, funny videos for the teams there, and it was so much awesome. fun. Like, yeah. I'm telling you, I should have been. I was a stone's throw away from going to film school. Like, I really should have made mm. gone down that path. So. You still have time. You've got at least like what, 10, 15 years left. <laughs> like you better not say <laughs> left in two the tank. or three more. I don't know. Wait, you're not offended by 10 or 15? You've got it. Realistically, you've got like 35 years Re left. I don't know. That depends on my diet choices, I think. I got to reel that in and move a little bit more. But I'm just coming off of surgery. So I feel like I get yeah. to be lazy don't for be too a hard little on bit longer. But I am eager to get moving again. What do you think about this? I've been thinking about it recently. Do you think influencers get a little bit of a bad rap? I get that they, you know, I, and I'm talking about influencers like that really live their life through social mm -hmm. media. But don't we all to a certain extent, we, like we only post positive things, yeah. right? We post the highlight reel. 
I don't post when, you know, Archie tries to attack me <laughs> or like when he's chewing something up that he shouldn't. I only post these cute, perfectly posed photos. It's not realistic. But the the dichotomy is that if I were to constantly post like, oh, I'm having such a hard day with Archie or oh, I'm having such a hard day with this, people would think I'm attention seeking, you know, and looking for yeah. sympathy so it's like you can't sometimes it feels like you can't win on social media it's like, just like anything. you've got to be a certain level of real a certain level of um manicured if you're if you're if you're, you're a shitty you. human being you're a shitty human being all the social media in the world is going to change that i just think that the difference is now everybody has a stage you know 30 40 years ago i think you know there were just as many i i mean i one might argue that the the fact that people can now be on stage has created more of this nonsense. Um, but I don't know. Just my, my whole philosophy is be interesting personally or professionally. If, if you're an, I mean, be interesting, provide value, be entertaining, be helpful, be educational, be kind, be kind, be, be kind. good. Like you do those things. You can kick ass as an influencer, but you know, for every, it's, it's just like, and I keep posting this, in, in helping others is that for every great human being or for every great agency or for every awesome influencer, there's nine shitty ones. Like it take it's hard to find the good ones, which is probably why companies need to hire an agency to help them find the good ones. Cause they're hard to find. Um, Cause I, I honestly believe that there's less good in the world than non good when it comes to just about anything you have to kind of dig for it. Yeah. And I think everyone is going to get a hard time once you're once you're an influencer. Yeah. Someone's not going to like something about you. And most people, as they get older, they get less inclined to want to kind of broadcast their life. I think generally. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Have you seen? I I'm so grateful that I'm I don't get fed this stuff all the time. The majority of the time when I see it, it's because it's so absurd that it's gone viral for being like distasteful. There's like young influencers who do stupid things like waste a bunch of food filming a video or like prank and i'm doing that in air yeah. quotes prank people it's just not funny they just make people uncomfortable in public yeah. um what's that little turd's name um he was in trouble there like years ago in the world, so or something he's blonde oh yeah dang i can't think of his name but something paul oh, yeah, jake paul okay. or well, yeah just like these these people are among us well that that's the new world that we live in i mean don't get me wrong i'm i mean i've always enjoyed the impractical joker so just but they're <gasps> i love that yeah, show they're, they're, their pranks their pranks are mostly harmless like if anything they're, they're making fools right, of themselves yeah. not other yeah. people when when you prank someone and you put someone in a position where they like are making a fool of themselves yeah. I don't, I don't like that. Good point. Yeah. Good point. And that wraps up this week's edition of the social. <laughs> I, I was going with my instincts. I felt like it, it's run its yeah, course. Yeah, go for it. All right. Yeah. I mean, I'm we're done. at 33 minutes. If anybody's still listening, then thanks. Thanks. The secret sound is. We were doing that now? Boop. Oh, I <laughs> I'm we'll thinking see. of having shirts done Maybe. now. I want to try and get people engaged here. So I could do one of those things where like, hey, if you share this episode and tag us, we'll send you a shirt or something like that. So they haven't had them made yet, but the, the mock-ups are pretty badass. So if you're listening and you really want one, share this episode and tag us. And maybe you'll get one. And you know they're tri blend. Uh, you know they they're tri blend. You know they're comfortable. You know their yes. quality. I do Jason not accepts nothing make less. rags. And you know what I'm talking about. You get that free shirt when you go to wear, and it's just garbage. You wear it once and it's done. No. Try blend, very cozy, washes really well. It'll be your favorite shirt. So I think you're turning me into a t shirt snob because oh, yeah. now most of my shirts are it's tri blend. Night, it's night and day. It's night and day. Once you go tri blend. You don't go I can't think of a rhyme for that. You don't go cotton. I don't think it needs no. to rhyme, does it? Like I mean I try to. Molly's always impressed when I say clever things like that. She's like, oh, what are you, a marketer? Yes. <laughs> okay, well, there you go, people. Everything you wanted to know about influencers and AMAs and t-shirts. So we got a lot accomplished today.
Thanks for listening. Oh, wait. No, Bye. you told me we need to ask people to leave <laughs> what, reviews, share it. Oh, yeah. Leave a review if you like us. If you great. don't, go yeah, away. Don't leave a bad review. Just help us. Help us help you. Help us help you. By sharing. Yes. Reviewing. And that's it. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Bye.